Hey guys, I'm finally back with a new Swift Firebase video. It's been a while since I updated the project and I know some of you are getting uh, errors in the code because you're using the new Firebase SDK but referencing the old code so things aren't working uh, you know, as I show in the videos before. So the first thing we need to do is update the Firebase SDK to the new 5.6 version. Uh, I think we were previously using like the 4.0 or whatever. Uh, and the way we do that is we just update the pod in our folder. So if you go into your project folder, uh, where the pod file is, you type ls, you'll see uh, yeah, pod file there. We just type pod update, and that's going to run and update to the new version of um, Firebase Core, Firebase Auth, Storage, Database, everything. Uh, so that'll just take a moment. So once it's done updating, you can just open up the project in Xcode. And probably won't show any errors right away but if we run it on the simulator we might uh, we might see that there's some problems with the new version uh, it's gonna have to index first process the file so you can just give that a moment okay so we see the build failed we got one error here which is not bad and it's the, the same one that everyone's been complaining about everyone's been running into this um, basically they've removed the download URL from the metadata the storage metadata here so the new way you do it is uh, you can take the storage ref, which is this guy here, and you call download URL, and it has a completion block, so it's going to go and, and fetch the download URL um, from Firebase. So we just do this and put the closure as URL error in. The URL is going to be an optional, so we can actually just put it right into our completion like that. And if the URL is there, then it's going to go through. If not, it's going to be nil. So we can just take out this chunk, and if we run it this time, our code should run fine. Okay, so it's running. Everything seems to be going all right. Uh, we can try signing up again and uploading a photo and just make sure that works okay. I'm just going to go with testing, one, two, three, random email, whatever. Add a photo, the same old generic photo. All right, let's try that and just, you know, we can try testing a post here to make sure that it's all working. Looks good so far. What's up, everybody? Let's scroll down to the very bottom. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uploaded the photo, our post is there, looking good. So before I end the video, uh, there's a couple of improvements I want to make to the post table cells here. Uh, one of them, of course, is that we need to update the timestamps so that it actually shows the right time. But also, uh, now that we've got a lot more posts here, uh, thanks to you guys posting and, and testing out this app, which is great. Um, it's been a lot of fun reading <laughs> what you guys wrote here, some really funny stuff. But uh, you'll notice the avatars on the side are kind of popping sometimes, especially when we scroll really fast. You'll notice uh, like right there, the image is replaced with another image. And what's really happening is the asynchronous code uh, for fetching an image, it can take any amount of time to return an image. So sometimes you'll fetch two images at the same time when you scroll really quickly, and one of them will finish after the other replacing the image. And what's bad about it is you don't really know if the image that's showing is the right one for that cell because they could have happened, uh, you know, the first one could have fetched after the second one. So what we can do is add a check here so that we only set the image to this fetched image if it's the right one. So what we can do is uh, add a var called post in the cell, a weak var. So it's going to be like a reference to this post here and say self post equal post. And we'll use that in a bit. In the get image function, I'm going to add a completion parameter called URL. That's basically going to be the same URL that we passed as a parameter to get image. I'm going to send that right back in the completion. And we'll also need to do that for the download image function. So here we have image, just put uh, underscore URL, URL. And again, we want to put this URL here. So that might seem a bit redundant, but what it lets us do is uh, pass in the URL that we originally sent to the function out in the completion block. And then we can say um, guard let post 
I say underscore post equals self post. So as long as we have a post here, a reference to the post here, then if the author photo URL absolute string, let's get the absolute string of the photo URL equal is equal to the URL absolute string. So if the post that we're currently referencing, uh, if that URL is equal to the URL that we of the image we just fetched, then we can put the image here. Otherwise, um, it's just gonna, you know, we can just put a message here um, and say not the right image. And let's give that a run and see if that works. So now that we've got it running, I'm just gonna scroll through and see if the images work a bit better. Uh, it seems to be okay, but I'm still seeing some popping. And I think what it is, is that here, I should have said uh, self profile image view image equal nil. So just set it to nil uh, what, right before we, we fetch a new image. And let's just see if that improves things. Okay, so one more time here, let's scroll through and see how the images look. Seems to be good, it looks, it looks a lot better. Uh, also, if you're noticing these, these blank ones here are because either people didn't set an image when they posted this, uh, when they created their account, or um, or I think maybe like the previous versions of the code uh, people are posting before you could even set and upload an image. But anyways, uh, for the ones that do have images, it seems to be looking a lot better now. Uh, you can see they're not being replaced. And yeah, that looks good. That looks good. It's not, not popping as much anymore. Okay, so that's good. Let's move on to the timestamps. Uh, that's pretty quick to do. Um, so I'm going to go into the post model here and change the timestamp to a new variable we'll call uh, created at. And it's going to be da a date. And we'll create the date by saying date, time interval since 1970. Uh, and we'll put the timestamp here. And we'll also divide it by 1,000. And the reason we divide it by a thousand is because in Firebase, dates are stored as milliseconds or timestamps are stored as milliseconds here. You can tell it's a really big number. And we need to convert that to seconds for Swift, so we divide it by a thousand here. All right, in the helper exten extensions, I've added a function called calendar time since now. And you can just copy this into your project or uh, look on GitHub and just copy this function into your project. Um, it basically just converts a date into uh, a readable string that says something like X number of years ago, or this post was posted, you know, three seconds, three minutes ago, that sort of thing. So it's really simple. You can just have a look at that for yourself. And in the post table, what we'll say is uh, subtitle label text equals post created at, uh, what did I call it? Uh, calendar time since now. There. So if we give this a run, we should see timestamps now instead of that 15 minutes that was there before by default. Okay, let's have a look. You can see it's a little bit small, but it says six months ago there. We scroll down, we see five months ago. Let's go all the way to the bottom. Uh, two months ago, one hour ago, two hours ago. Nice, yeah, it looks good. Four hours ago, one week ago, yeah. So, and actually, let's, you know, let's just test it and say, ha 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 ha. Zero seconds ago, yeah, good. So it's working well. Uh, we've made a few improvements. We've updated to the new Firebase SDK. So um, all good to go. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.